the moment we have very few results, a number of conjectures, but I hope that after reason of the amount of time, we have a number of results and few conjectures. So Sandler's notations, our field is finite field. G is a split reductive group. T is smooth, absolutely reusable, complete curve over K. Now we have two kinds of players. One tilde is a stack of G modules and one is a groupoid of K points. Um, the, as every groupoid it has canonical measure, so we can talk about uh, function belonging to L2 as function of this groupoid. We have number of spaces, so actually kind of two times three spaces. First of all, we have three types of coefficients. It's either Q bar or QN or C. And then we have two types of functions. Two group of functions, functions come find a support on, we can see a function on uh, groupoid, but groupoid is discrete. And um, so we have two kind of spaces of function. One denoted by V, a function with finite support, the only IV head is without any condition of support. And we'll try to define something like L2, which is lies in between, but we want to define L2 in uh, not only with complex K fiction. In an elastic case, we want this L2 space to be really trace of some category. And this is the talk about outlining this possibility and kind of information which you produce to us. So here notations, notations I hope to be consistent. So the first thing which was conjecture is still, I call it race conjecture inside of its a theorem is realization of a QL, QL bar, but I will say QL uh, function with finite support on band as a trace of a category. So there is a natural category of QL bar shifts on the stack and there is subcategory of shifts with the important singular support. Well, we have a natural embedding, of course, of second category into first one. And there exists, we'll need in some moment, as I left a join to this embedding. It's a maps kind of uh, shifts to pro shifts with nilpotent singular support. We, for a while we will need it, but I just didn't want to introduce notation. Now there is a, something which called trace conjecture. Uh, you can consider a category of shifts with nilpotent singular support, Frabenius X there. So you can take trace of Frabenius of this category, a categorical trace which is a priori uh, a complex of QL vector space. So the trace conjecture, which is a theorem, tells us two things. First of all, that this complex is really a vector space. It means it has zero cohomology, uh, non-trivial cohomology only in degree zero. And this vector space is space of finitely supported functions on our group point. So this is something taken for granted and this is paper is posted on archive. Any questions before I move? So, so, so okay, can I ask, so uh, by tracing you essentially understand the um, 
Hochschild homology of the function, right? This is the Hochschild homology. Hochschild homology of Frabelius. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Now, the reason we consider category of shifts with nil positive singular support is that on this category, not on the full category of shifts, we have action, have action of remarkable algebra category. For any point on the curve, we have an action of a Hecke category on the category of uh, our category of shifts with the important singular support. When I say Hecke category, this is uh, derived Hecke category and uh, by results of this Rokavnikov and Finkelberg, it has very nice description. This category is equivalent to Zhichak, where Zhichak is dual group, uh, equivalent modulus over DG algebra with symmetric power of shifted uh, dual Lie Lie algebra on the dual group. And in a variant in which I consider, we consider only shifts whose support lies in the nilpotent cone. This is a, uh, so the main thing is that we have, uh, yeah, yeah, there is some general construction which I formulate and we apply it to category of shift. If you have any reasonable category with action of uh, the derived Hecke algebra, then you have canonical filtration on this category parameterized by, uh, you can say two ways, by nilpotent orbits in the dual group or by closed invariant subsets in the nilpotent code. That's essentially the same. Um, and it's kind of completely formal construction, which I will not be described. But it comes from the structure of H, very important part, the symmetric algebra on the dual algebra, concentrated, supporting the important core. Now, uh, we have our curve, we have any point. So, with the point, we have a heck action on the category R on shifts with the nilpotent support. And therefore we can associate for any nilpotent orbit, we can associate subcategory of shifts with support in the closure of the top. A priori, uh, this subcategory dependent on the choice of the point on the curve because action, to define the action, take action we have to choose the point in the curve. But fortunately, Dario proved the filtration doesn't depend on the choice. So we obtain canonical filtration on the category of shifts with the important support. It will be easier for me to talk a little bit more formal. I take partially order set of uh, important conjugacy classes or closures. And we have canonical filtration parameterized by points in I on the category we like to discuss. Now we want to take a trace of this filtration. So this is the first conjecture. First conjecture is that if you take trace on subcategory corresponding to any I, you still will get a vector space. And the second thing is, of course, if I is less than J, you have natural map of corresponding vector spaces. They are in banks. Putting this together, you obtain, in terms of, assuming this conjecture, you obtain a canonical filtration 
on the space of finally supported functions, QL valued functions on our group head. Our second conjecture is that this filtration is equal to another filtration, which comes from Ramanujan conjecture. You see, in the same, but even before we move, uh, we see this conjecture is parameterized exactly by what we want to parameterize. We parameterize by the important orbits in the dual group. And if you look to Arthur's conjectures, which proven for a classical group in some ways, uh, is, uh, they prescribe existence of such filtration. But what I'm trying saying that if this can this and next conjecture are true, it means this conjecture which allows to define the filtration. The second conjecture which says that is this filtration coincide with one we would expect to see from analysis. This will show that kind of categorical approach, but it allows you to define, let's say, relatively cheaply, or in some sense, mod conjecture very shortly, a filtration. So now I'll go sometime to discuss analysis, it means filtration, another filtration on the same space. Before I can say they're equal, I have to describe them. But before I do this, is there any question? Because for a while, I shift completely my topic. I don't know if it's very relevant, but um, if we consider all uh, ships without nilpotent support, will uh, nothing like a trace conjecture would hold? Is that... A trace conjecture will hold uh, by stupid reason, but gives nothing because hacky operators will not talk. So, for example, you cannot define filtration. Filtration is defined, definition of filtration based on the. Yeah, this is understand. Ah, ah, but so, so, so you still will get. No, 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 no. The, the, I'm sorry. The definition of filtration uh, makes sense on the category. I think at least a, at least a priori makes sense without no potent single support. I mean, I mean, you need no potent single support to, I mean, if you want the statement that the trace on the category is equal to functions with finite support, then you need this. Um, Neil Potent single support condition. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't think so, but it's all right. Let's not discuss uh -huh. it. The opposite assumption yeah, have opposite position of what it means. But let's go on. It's kind of, you can define what you want if you can you can tell the full category. Now, what precise you can define, which is agreed. Okay. Mm. Now, discrete spec. This is pure analysis. So we have a field, we have ring of Adele. We have a, let's say, semi-simple group, which be Levy subgroup later, this why it's M and not G. And we, can, of course, can identify um, a function on one M with K and by spherical function in the corresponding Adele core. Uh, okay, we can define uh, discrete spectrum. The way we define it now, it uses complex numbers. We take a two, and we can discrete spectrum. It's a finite dimensional subspace. Because it's okay, invariant vector, finite dimensional subspace, which we report that in a minute, but so um, this we do in the case when uh, group, I may even say it, I should say it, when the group is uh, semi-simple. Yeah, I'd say pretty semi-simple group. If I'm with reductive group, there are small multiplications because of course you don't, small don't have discrete spectrum because of action in the center. But you essentially take functions which are belong to discrete spectrum 
and the direction of commentator of him, and who support his fine number of M0 for me. Hmm. Final notion of what I call discrete in the uh, reductive case. For example, if your group is GM, then your set is Z, essentially, or something like Z, in the take that function is kind of find support. Now, to formulate that conjecture, I have to move a little bit from spherical to a horizontal. So we can see the set of genetic points. We have combination of field F in the point. And H P is evaporating at algebra for F. Now, in our paper with Lustig, we kind of describe the presentation of evaporating at algebra. In a particular, we said this, to any evaporating at algebra, we associate a pair of I mean, irreducible, of course, complex representation a pair of semi simple and important element in a dual group and dual algebra. This pair defines uniquely up to good uh, So we shall denote O sigma the convergent class of the corresponding important. Now, if a query algebra, has a remarkable involution, which kind of called, I think, the Levinsky involution, which maps, which map simply generated TS to QTS index. So I, I denote by thousand the Levinsky involution. It has different definitions, but we take this one. And now I can formulate it objection, which Mm. So suppose you have reducible spherical representation in discrete set. There are two things. Take some point B, and then it will be representation of the spherical algebra. In particular, consider it as representation of evaporating algebra. So we can associate with semi-simple element, which is S. Now, I take this representation of a Bahori algebra and apply the Zinsky evolution. I obtain new representation of a Bahori algebra and I take uh, the corresponding uh, important element in the, the algebra of the dual group. Now we put two conditions. Now, the formula is like managing uh, first of all, the semi simple element, always compact, can correspond temperament sometimes. And uh, the important element does not depend on the point on the curve of the field. And uh, is also distinguished. Uh, I will suggest to this. The statement that it does not depend on the point is very parallel to Dario's statement in categorical world that filtration does not depend on the point in the So it's a kind of parallel statement. I'll formulate it here as a conjunction, of course, as it is now. Now, so if we choose distinguish orbit, distinction is important, important, but important doesn't matter. Orbit in the dual group, we define L orbit O, we define L O, the corresponding uh, subspace in discrete set. Now, since um, uh, discrete set in finite dimension, you can prove that this subspace is spent by functions with Q bar value function. So in spite of the fact that we started to use notion of discrete spectrum 
is now going to analytic war. We really constructed some space over Q bar. And therefore, over Q n, because there's space over Q bar, it's easy to construct Q. We discuss here discrete spectrum. Now let's describe the general. So there is a notion of one collective. So suppose we have splits in a simple group. K is the same split, standard maximum compact subgroup. P is a parabolic subgroup. And we choose a distinguished orbit in M. We can check. And consider space of functions on W cos F, whose restrictions on M belong to the space part of the discrete spectrum we described before. Now there is a following design due to Lennon, which says the following. Maybe in this form it's easy and you don't remember, but definitely in it famous. If you take any function, you can produce or try to produce functions on GA mod GF by just averaging the function was invariant under PF by definition, and you make it invariant on GF as stupidly as possible, but averaging by cos. So the statement is that this function is converged in L2 and divide the function with also Q bar value function. The second result, non-trivial result, it corresponds kind of function equation between either and series. That the space which you obtain depends only on your Levy subgroup and can yourself, and of course. Uh, distinguished independent element, but does it depend on the parabolic for this level? This is essentially functional equation by ending the series, which says that we span on the function or the space on function as they span does it depend on the choice of parabolic. Now we can formulate. Uh, can define a filtration. In a second, I give example in the case of SL2, which is of clarified definition. But we define some number of those spaces in L2, and we define filtration as orthogonal to this. Instead of discussing this, we we'll discuss first case of SL2 as example, and then get back talk in general case as little as I can. So the conjecture is, if you remember, alpha is isomorphism between trace on the category and uh, function with finite support on our group point. We assume that um, if you take subcategory, you get a subspace. And conjecture is, uh, this so we essentially got two different concentrations on the space of Q valued, Q valued function with final support. And conjecture is that these uh, two filtrations coincide. This conjecture is proven in the case of SL2, which I'll discuss. And uh, it's also could be proven in the case or arbitrary group if the curve is genetic. Any question before I move on? Uh, sorry, could you go up a little bit and remind the definition of LJ? I got a bit confused. LJ bungee. Instead, instead of doing this, I do it for SL2 and then ah, we'll okay. come back. Ah, right? Sure, yeah, that's fine. So, so why was it important to consider orthogonal? Uh, so you, yeah, no, no. Roman, let's consider the case of SL2, okay? Yes. And then we come because nothing else happens, but it's easy to see. It. In case of SL2, our set of network environment consists of two elements. So our filtration consists of two, just one subspace. There's two steps, one subspace. 
So I have to define subspace, I have to define subcategory, and I have to relate it. So what I do first, I define subspace, and this was the answer to the question. Subspace is very simple. So they function, what is it on the right side? It is function on groupoids with finding support. What is the subspace? Subspace is space of function with integral zero. Now, let's come back. If we take discrete spectrum for SL2, discrete spectrum for SL2 consists of cascade of representations with, with the C and consists of, uh, no, discrete spectrum, sorry, discrete, uh, discrete, sorry, repeat. discrete spectrum for SL2 consists is cascade of representation and constant function. Assuming from correct conjecture, all cascade of representation are tempered and therefore they belong to zero orbit. So what corresponds to orbit one in the regular and important orbit is only discrete spectrum, which is constant function. So this is our definition. We define filtration is orthogonal complement to uh, things which come from representation which correspond to regular input. In our case, only represent the other part in functions on one which comes from regular input at the constant function. Therefore, the subspace is function with compact support with integral zero, integral in terms of group order. So this is why I need it with the pedonalic dimension. I don't see how else I can define function with integral zero, except saying they are orthogonal to constant. Any question? So I don't think it makes sense. I can go back and kind of uh, give a definition, but. Uh, but it is, yeah, it's very short, but it's kind of pathological. You talk, some take functions which lie in L2 and belong to uh, some important elements and take orthogonal to them. For SL2, the only non trivial important element is the only subspace to the constant, and you get the space of. Function with compact support, final support with integral. So this is the answer. The subspace, space of function with integral. Which means orthogonal support. Now, the second step we should we have to do, we have to define a subcategory in the category. Uh, in this case, uh, in the case of SL2, there is an easy way out. And this is, it essentially uh, a subcategory generated by one object was called Whitaker sheet. So let me remind your construction of Whitaker sheet. So as Whitaker sheet was first constructed, as a shift on budget, and then to produce shift with important uh, singular support, we apply the left adjoint the beta, which I discussed before. We have nature of embedding uh, category of shift with important support in the full category, the left adjoint. Let's yeah, join with something in a pro category, but not a big So let's discuss what is. So, what well, is what I said? We define Whitaker sheet as a pro object in this category, a pro dash here, and we define a subcategory generator by the quotient. Pro object is not an object, but by, by definition of pro object, it's 
projects in terms of objects. And we take subcategorial code. So the question is how to construct this particular uh, process. So we take square root of canonical button. Uh, and now we continue kind of covering a set of pairs where F is a little bundle and J is embedding as a line bundle. Okay. Uh, to each such pair, we have naturally have an extension since uh, we can consider as a little bundle where K minus one half as sub bundle and clearly quotient is K one half. And therefore we get elements from um, K one half to K minus one half, uh, which I could mix uh, as always. Uh, but um, its extension is the same as H one with K position in K. And therefore it's canonically. So we have assignment to any point in our in the k point of a cylinder we assign element in k it's very easy to see, to see this assignment come from regular map from a cylinder to a1 you can just repeat what i say not on the level of points now so on the other hand of course we have natural projection from a cylinder to bun you just forget j and now we define, we take L to the Arden Schreiber uh, on A1, and we define not better telephone projection should be removed, just mistake. We define, we write W, A, well, first of all, the usual thing, we uh, pull it back, we project it down, we get some ship on one. This ship doesn't have nil potent single support and apply beta, which projected on uh, shifts with nil potent single support. And now we define uh, subcategory as subcategory generated by Whitaker vector. So one can prove that if you take trace of this, trace of this subcategory is a vector space, it is a subspace of trace on the full category of important single support. It means that there's a space in a uh, finite supported function. And the level says that subspace of function with integral zero. So this is kind it, of a- I'm sorry, this is a little bit inaccurate uh, about the Whitaker shift. So, okay. So it's it's kind of you, you said two things. One of them was correct, that there's not. So you take this direct image p lower shriek. It's it's a sheaf. It, that's what we call the Whitaker sheaf, and but it doesn't have nilpotent single support. But yes, well, but then you, you take, take a projector. Uh, you don't take yeah, you take beta, not project. I said left adjoint. I said this projector. The, the this this I said mistake. Yes, I said beta. Is left adjoint to embedding. Better project is this. Yeah, but it's left adjoint does exist, so it's a pro left adjoint, but you so it's yeah, yeah. As I said, I uh, said this is what I said here. Uh, uh then type it in chat. Let, I'll type the correct formula in chat. Yeah, yeah, fine. Then. Okay. The third part of the statement, a conjecture. Is uh, and you see, until now we did not move, we divide the filtration on function with uh, uh, find the support, but we really want to see a divided in term of something you didn't have to do with category. We define for Ankara here, we define, for example, for SL2 constant function with discrete spectrum. And uh, using discrete spectrum, we define filtration. We really want to see discrete spectrum also coming from categorical results. So let me first explain 
how you do it. Like, we'll see it in detail, but let me say how we do it for a for a general definition. Maybe just one second, if I can find it. No, okay, let me say, yeah, maybe you write it. Uh, so, what do you have in the sense? In the two, we have uh, a space of function with either support and subspace of function which have integral zero. Now, you can say, let's take orthogonal complex in L2 of function of integral zero. This is orthogonal complement. Uh, in the subspace of constant function. So the moment you know filtration, you really can reconstruct in case of the in a grid spectrum backward. We first define filtration using this spectrum. But now, when we define filtration using categories, we can define, try to define discrete spectrum backward as kind of orthogonal complement to this filtration. And you can do it. Here I wrote a definition which is impossible to read because there are too many indices. But essentially, if you think about, if you have a, a good situation, if you have a, a space, then, and you have finite filtration, and each of them has a property, that if you take closure and do an intersect with the original space, you don't get anything new. You can take orthogonalize the system by Schmidt orthogonalization and to describe some kind of subspaces in L2. In L2, the direct sum of these subspaces, which define the only way one can imagine. So the third conjecture is there exists category. So we can define, use this filtration. We can define back, so say, uh, algebraic part of it. So algebraic part of it too. It's essentially something which comes from a great series of discrete spectrum of all levels of groups. This is kind of definition of algebraic part. What I say, you can reconstruct the configuration. Now, the conjecture is that actually these pieces also come from category, as the traces of category. The problem is that uh, they, since these categories, even in case of the two constant function, they don't have final support. So they are not subcategories or not sub, cannot come from subcategories of categories start to be. They should come from something else. And they should come from Schmidt antagonization in categorical real. In this, what I'll try to describe in case of SL2. We don't have description in general. In case of SL2, I would, so essentially we want to construct categories. We want to define embeddings of the traces of this category into function on our group point, function without compactable, which was head shows, and we want the image of this embedding to be spaces which we obtain from Smith orthogonalization. So, uh, as I uh, say, we now can construct category. We have some more, but some more, but essentially only for SL2. So, let me, in this case, uh, what we need, we just have to design two categories uh, for i equals zero and to describe maps. So let me describe first category correspond to regular nilpotent, and that category was correspond to zero. 
Well, so we have our category of sheep. We have the subcategory uh, generated by we take sheep as penetration is defined. We can take a quotient category. Now we have a natural map from category C to the quotient category. Now there is a place in category is much better than vector space. You have back, map of vector spaces. You have map in the direction of a dual vector space, but the vector space is itself, themselves. Mm -hmm. But in categorical real, we have adjoint functors, and we can take right adjoint, and mm, uh, right adjoint will be, uh, so you can describe what it is, it will be a subcategory, consisting of objects whose cohomology are complete. Uh, now we can consider smaller, the still category is too big, we cannot be traced. Although we cannot give with it, we can trace but not object. We can say some, put some category for objects which compact in the corresponding constructibles are the corresponding shifts are constructible. That means they have uh, sit in finite cohomological degree and are constructible with shifts. Uh, and now we can define a map from a trace of this category to function on G using old growth and decrescent. Since you already realized objects as one is constructing a complex of C, we can take trace of Rabenius. And since we are constructible complex of C with trivial uh, cohomology, we can respond to function of the constant. So you really can prove that this map from the trace Rabenius on S1. Uh, to constant is a model. Uh, now our concept, yeah, it, it claims here in this case that really trace on a full uh, category of where I'm the image of right adjoint is equal to trace on uh, nice object. So therefore, uh, our it regularization is taking right adjoint on a quotient in this case. And trace is a constant. Now, first, the last thing I want to say is, uh, yeah, this is what I said. So this is kind of first isomorphism. Yeah. Now, when we consider the category corresponding to zero, it's a very similar situation. Uh, the thing here is, uh, let's see what kind of a space we want. Okay, I just, so let's come back to consider our space function. We start with space of function with compact support. We add to them constant. So we obtain the um, function which constant plus function with compact support. We have chosen that space of function is compact support. And now we want to take orthogonal complex. So the space of function which you want to obtain will be function which has some compact support, finite support after constant. And orthogonal to constant. This is typical organization procedure. Uh, a very strange and first take orthogonal. So, Subspace, okay, third. Now we see how this Schmidt organization works in the level of category. So we really have to construct something bigger than the original category. Because the original category trace lies the function is compact support. We do it in the following way. It's kind of renormalization. 
uh, uh, we have, of course, embedding of Sinol to Sinol. We have right adjoint. Right adjoint doesn't map uh, compact object into compact. It's good. So we take uh, to deal the full category uh, generated the values. Uh, okay, this is a small thing I ignore. Essentially, take uh, full subcategory generate the values of right adjoint on compact object. And you construct a category which can be incompletion of this category. Now, uh, uh, in this case, you once more obtain uh, realization with category as constructible shapes by G. You can uh, apply growth index procedure of taking trace, get functions on bungee. And the statement is we will get functions which are cons of the form, which are have compact support mod constants and which are token to constant. So this is exactly our second space. Okay, I think I'll stop. And let to answer questions, but it's kind of should wait some time for continuation. But I hope that this kind of argument could really allow to prove, in this case, Ramanujan conjecture. Okay, questions? Well, first, maybe let's uh, thank David again for his talk. Sorry, I have a very uh, silly question. So just going back to the title of the talk. So can you summarize again, what is the categorical analog of L2? Uh, categorical analog of L2 is all, we do is the kind of procedure of taking quotients, taking right adjoints. We have a category, we have filtration. This we have. Having categories filtration, we have a game to play. We can take uh, two operations. One operation is we can take quotient or sub quotient and then write a joint. This gives a new category. We also have another game we can play. We can use a right a joint to embedding to define new type of object which we can define is compact, like similar to difference between coherent, quasi coherent shifts, incoherent shifts. When you define an incoherent shifts, you take all uh, coherent shifts and define them compact. And then you construct a category. So we have two ways to produce <coughs> categories by taking quotients and by, uh, by adding by using right adjoint, right adjoint in two different frameworks, right adjoint to quotients and right adjoint to embedding to bring the new object, the, the node compacts, as images for compact object. The statement is that if you play this game, hope is if you play this game, you get some number of categories. And each of these categories, you can take direct sum of these categories is a categorical L2. But the statement is hope, the statement of hope. You take a trace on each of these categories, this gives you corresponding subspace in L2 functions. Can I briefly summarize? I mean, uh, let me just reformulate. So the point is the following that suppose you have a category of filtration and the category is nice, so everything is um, co complete and compactly generated. Then what can you do? The first of all, you can take the associated graded category. That's kind of the first thing you can, uh, uh, the first approximation. Now it turns out that there's a way to sort of renormalize uh, that uh, abstractly. If it came from the filtration, there's a way to renormalize every graded piece. So by renormalize mean that you sort of change the notion of compact object and then take incompletion. 
And so, and, and, and this is kind of an ab abstract uh, uh, thing you can, in principle, do for any filtered category, for any sufficiently nice filtered category. So the procedure is the following, that you, you take the category of sheaves uh, on Bungi with uh, 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 nilpotent single support, then you define this filtration, then you take the associated graded, and then you apply this renormalization. And, th and this is this categorical L2 conjecture. Just in terms of a function, L2, also define the direct sum of pieces. Right, no, but then you can apply trace of Rabidus, and, and then you will get some space, uh, and uh, this space will be a priori written as a direct sum over nilpotent orbits, and then conjecturally in Fresnel 2 that, that we know this, and maybe when even that part we know in general, can, uh, but can conjecture there's a way to map this space into to functions. And uh, moreover, it lands inside L2. Um, uh, I, I, there was something you, you said at the beginning. I don't know if I misheard. Did you say there's a kind of categorical Ramanujan conjecture? This exactly says uh, the filtration is by unipotent element. The, ah, that's the Raman, I see. Okay. I see. That's the Ramanujan. Exactly. Uh -huh. If you define, you see, you can define a kind of filtration on the space of function without using uh, Ramanujan conjecture. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. there will be parameterized, but I don't know what. A kind of type of non temperance What is Ram? What we? How we parameterize? Uh, what is our filtration? on the space of function. Essentially, the filtration measures non temporal Now, this statement now can, has two parts. First of all, temperness is a property or group over local field. Mm -hmm. So the first statement is that you think any automorphic representation. Mm -hmm. And the non temporalness will be the same for almost all points. And mm -hmm. if you think spherical, than for all points. But let's say not spherical, it will be true. The same for almost all points. The second statement is that non temperness Now, non temperness is essentially defined by real co-character. It just says how fast things grow. Mm -hmm. uh, the second part of Ramanujan conjecture is this non temperness corresponds to co-character a local character, it's not the same as a, uh, so you know, the character, which is co character in the dual group. So the second part said that this co character in the dual group actually come from the presentation of what they do. In other words, corresponds to an important way. I see. Mm -hmm. Ramanian conjecture consists of two parts. First of all, so measure of non temperness right. doesn't depend on the point. In the second, a measure of temperness corresponds to co characters in the dual group corresponding to representation of cell two on the important element, which is the same. Okay. On the categorical side, we have some kind of statement that this, in the terms of different filtration, is true. The non temperance does not depend on point as a result of Zaria. Mm -hmm. And by definition, by the okay. description of derived Hecke, it corresponds to the important element of the group. Okay. So conjecture is that these two filtration coincide. And this will give some understanding why a man of Okay. Thank you. Can I say the same thing slightly differently? <clears throat> So, so again, Ramanujan says that if you have a this kind of a element of the discrete spectrum to it, you 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 can associate, uh, let's say, an element in the length, an important element in the Langlois dual algebra. So we can't quite do that yet, but we have a step toward this direction. So, namely, we have a filtration of the category exactly numbered, indexed by this nilpotent 
conjugacy classes. Mm -hmm. We know that if we take the trace on the entire category, you get all automorphic functions, and then you get a priori get a derived filtration on this set of automorphic functions. So the first conjecture that David wrote says that this filtration is actually classical. It's actually it's filtration by subspaces. Right. So at least we will. So we still can't say. Oh, so here's the automorphic function. That's important. But at least we can say to which uh, element of the filtration it belongs to. So it's a step. So we're still little some distance away from understanding what Ramanujan actually says. Right. Well, yes, and also some other conjecture says somehow what is the relation between that filtration and, you know, discrete spectrum and so on. So because a priori this is just filtration which has nothing to do with discrete discreteness or temperateness or anything like that. But uh, but somehow the other conjectures somehow are were exactly about this. Conjecture two, let's say. Mm. Yeah, I don't remember if it was conjecture two. Or conjecture two, yes, yes, indeed, yes. So we have the filtration of the category that gives conjecturally a classical filtration on the space. And conjecture two said this filtration actually is is the Ramanujan filtration. I see. Mm -hmm. mm, thank you. Uh, are there other questions? Yeah, I have a, um, a kind of a philosophical question, and I think since it's the last talk, I uh, just want to ask it now. Um, so. Uh, well, one of the reasons why we introduced Hecke operators was because Ramanujan noticed uh, this property uh, property of uh, multiplicativity in the coefficients of the tau function. That is, if you uh, multiply uh, the coefficient a m with a n, it is equal to a m times n if m n are co-prime. And uh, uh, the linear operators that uh, Hecke introduced, they also have this property that uh, they are uh, multiplicative. Um, is there uh, an analog of this uh, multiplicative, uh, multiplicative property of Hecke operators in uh, the geometric setting? Yeah, they just say that Hecke operator actions correspond to the different points commute. There is one. Uh, okay, so Hecke modification uh, at two different points commute with each other, basically. This, this is the state. It's exactly the statement that for relative of prime. I see. see. Okay, thank you. Uh, the thing is, I've been, I wanted to look at the tr most trivial case, and that was uh, modifying uh, the Hecke operator at a single point. And over there, I couldn't make sense of uh, this multiplicativity. Yeah. And uh, and even I think this question is wrong, but it's definitely trivial. On slide ten, you introduced uh, the Eisenstein series. Um, uh, I did it in the Titan Poincaré series. I never talked about Eisenstein. There's there's E F that you said. It's one current. It's one current series. Uh, yeah, I avoid. Uh, let me go here. It's like ten. Okay. I I don't. My problem is somehow here. It is. It's one current series. Um, I never had a different series. Uh, okay, okay, but uh, yes, this uh, okay. So uh, okay, so you take this Poincaré series, and this explicit EF is in um, uh, an L two on uh, the stack bungee. Is can one somehow get an analog of this as a function on uh, um, bungee stable? So the one that has been considered in previous talks, basically, and especially in the. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see. Uh, it's kind of working with local field. It has advantages and disadvantages of working with fine. You work with local fields. Yeah. At least on the level of L2, there is no difference between L2 on R and L2 on R star. Yeah. Okay. On the level of finite fields, there's great difference. I see. Okay. Function K, function K star are not the same. Uh, kind of stable bundles, they're dense, open and dense in the stack of all bundles. So at the moment you work over local field, you can allow yourself to consider L2 on the uh, stable locus. 
mm-hmm. give you correct L2 function. It doesn't give you correct notion of good space of functions. If story, uh, smooth functions on R and smooth functions or are star are different. Mm-hmm. But in some approximation, we're talking about L2, there is no difference. So when you're working on a finite field, you never can restrict yourself to the stable right. local because take operator take you out. Yeah, okay. Well. Are there other questions? It's not, well, this is a rather unusually short session, but I guess it's- Sorry. <laughs> We did it. You should wait for half a year, then we have longer. Ah, okay, yeah, well, well, we'll invite you again in half a year then, <laughs> if that's okay. Okay. Okay, okay. thank, thank, you, thank very you very much, much again. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks to everybody. Thank you.